good people YouTube I'm the watch idiot and yeah you join me outside over here because it's pretty much the first day that I can actually go out wearing a jacket which feels so good I'm over summer I need winter to start but also on top of that it's a uh, there's a new place over here that I didn't know about so it's a uh, nice to make a new discovery over here what the hell so yeah and uh, yeah speaking of discoveries I made an even bigger discovery with this here SPB 143 with this here SPB 313 <laughs> and yeah it's not really a discovery in terms of obviously not being a new brand new case design whatever it is over here but for me it's a new discovery in that I've never really liked black bezel white dial watches so for some reason this one just worked even better than I thought it would and it just grew on me but also on top of that now that I have it I mean Seiko just did such a good job on everything else I mean the case the bracelet design all that good stuff over there which we're gonna get into over here but uh I'm, I'm absolutely loving it and I think it actually might be the best high-end prospects diver from Seiko at the moment big words but also on top of that I wanted to thank every single one of you for hitting 10,000 subscribers. I mean, it's just crazy to think about. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is weird. But um, yeah, it, it's been so awesome this entire journey and also getting to know so many of you. And yeah, let's uh, keep it going and uh, keep it growing. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, uh, especially if you're a returning viewer, especially because there's gonna be a giveaway happening soon. And uh, yeah, you uh, stay tuned for that over there. But uh, yeah, uh, let's just get into it right now. Okay, so now let's get into the dimensions, and the dimensions are absolutely amazing. I mean, it's 41 millimeters across, and it's got a 12.2 millimeter thickness, and the lug to lug of 46.7. But having said that, actually, it wears much smaller than what those dimensions would suggest and that's down to the bezel being smaller than the case and the width of the visible top part of the bezel being 39 millimeters which is like a black bay 58 and it actually wears pretty similarly to a black bay 58 and yeah i mean the 313 continues to look really small you know even when compared to other watches and then the thickness is absolutely incredible over here because it actually when i when i see it on my wrist it actually wears a lot like my 10 point something millimeter sne 569 that i'm just so obsessed about from last year so uh yeah that that was a very pleasant surprise and finally here we have a 20 millimeter lug width which is always great to see you know and there's also no fitment issues with pretty much any strap that you put on it i mean leather or whatever it may be uh thick natos or what have you oh and the bracelet is good too i mean it tapers from 20 down to 18 millimeters which isn't you know that much of a taper i prefer four millimeters but you know given the design it kind of works out well so i don't really have too much of an issue with it here the other really big thing is that it, it is it weighs only 151 grams and also okay uh yeah i Okay, I, th I think it's about to start raining over here, and uh, yeah, uh, my car's really far away. Oh my god, we need to go. And the car's really far away, and also I don't want the stuff to get wet. And also, TWI is pretty much allergic to rain over here, so yeah, okay, I'll, I'll see you guys inside. Okay, back inside. So onto the dial and bezel, and I'm pairing these two together because, you know, never before have the dial and bezel been so connected at least for me because it's this color combo that made me get it in the first place so finally while browsing through Naman watches for like the thousandth time i mean i saw that they were having a sale on all their seikos and i think they're still having it right now as far as i know so after you know waiting a bit longer i finally made it happen and i also i emailed them uh asking to send me one with an aligned bezel and they sent me a picture just confirming that it is just like they did on my marine master 300 so yeah you know happy days and the alignment is all good and in person i'm absolutely loving this combo because the white dial is matte and super crisp and it just looks so good with the black bezel i mean oh and also i want to note i'll talk about the indices later on but yeah just throughout all the shots over here note that the indices are light blue even though the gloom is green yeah okay we'll get into that later and then we have the 430 date window which will undoubtedly bring a bunch of opinions and 
I mean, for me, I mean, I'm not usually a fan of 430 date windows if they're intrusive, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, Seiko put in probably one of the best 430 date windows that I've seen. And you know, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that from Seiko because you know, Seiko actually spent money to make this date window right because they put in a color matched date wheel on all the three uh, watches that they came out with. And also they lined up the date in the window instead of having it at an angle. I mean, which I 100% thought Seiko would have done just to you know cut costs. And also the window itself is circular, which to me it looks really cool. And because it's at the 430, we get an extra loom plot at three, which was done to make it compliant with the new ISO dive wash standards, you know, making sure that all the 12 points have loom on them. Okay, so now on to the bezel, and it's a good one with an aluminum black insert and a slightly angled grippy coin edge bezel. And I mean, do I wish that the insert was the same sort of brushed steel insert that's on the SPB 143? Yeah, sure, but I mean, at the same time, I never really had an issue with any aluminum bezel just because they have their own look and they have, you know, and in this particular case, it just adds to the contrast with the white dial. And also on top of that, the Captain Willard has a aluminum uh, bezel, so it's not really an issue. And the bracelet is the next big thing when it comes to what makes this watch so special. And honestly, it was probably the biggest and the final deciding factor when it came to actually buying this, just because it looks so good and it's actually different. We've got here a five link bracelet that is fully brushed, which you know was an amazing surprise just because I am a sucker for all things brushed like my beloved Pelagos. But yeah, I mean, I love the design itself because here we have a multi-link bracelet that still has a sort of tooly vibe, but you know, while just looking different from just the off the shelf and ubiquitous, you know, Oyster or Jubilee bracelets. And the next good thing is that the links are just right in terms of thickness, which, you know, keeps the overall weight down. And it's also something that wasn't exactly done right, in my opinion, on the SPP 143. Oh, the last good thing is that the end link looks really good and it's just really well defined. It flows well with the bracelet and it actually looks like it belongs on the watch. And then comes the clasp which is really irritating, but you know, it looks good, it feels good, it's very nice and solid, milled, all that good stuff, but they decided to shorten the class, I guess just because this is a smaller Prospect watch, but you know, that in and of itself isn't a bad thing, but because they shortened it, that means that they got rid of two micro adjustment holes and they didn't include any half links while they took out the micro adjustment holes. You can't have that and also not give half links but in the end this is an 18 millimeter clasp so it is easy enough to just swap in a different clasp like i did over here just for the time being so yeah as irritating it is as it is it's not the end of the world and now the case so it doesn't have a crazy new design i mean it's based off of the 6105-8000 from the 70s and i'm a big fan of the case so much so that i got a smaller Islander version last year. Yeah, check this out. But yeah, I mean, this one over here is, I think, just like the sweet spot in terms of size. However, the interesting unseco e thing about it is that on the wrist, there are no visible polished surfaces and it's all brushed, which I absolutely love. And it just drives home the vintage tool vibe and the simple design also just makes it look and wear super thin. Also, actually, the brush finish itself is a step up from other watches just because it just has an air of quality about it when you see it in different lights and just moving around and reflecting nicely. And on top of it being well brushed, it's got drilled lugs, which is always so very wonderful to see because, you know, not only does it look cool, but it also makes life so much easier when swapping out the bracelet and swapping out straps and what have you. Oh, and the crown is nicely brushed and not signed, and that's more than okay with me because, you know, I never really cared about whether or not crowns are signed. I mean, it's great if they are, and I don't care if they aren't. I mean, to me, it's more important that they do their job, they feel good, and they look well-proportioned with the case and just oh, complementing the overall look. 
So the handset is interesting because, you know, first off, I love the design. I mean, I, we've seen this on other high-end Pro Specs watches like the Captain Willard, the SPB143, the Marine Master 200, but also online, it looks all black and it is black, but it's more of a black chrome and the darkness of the hands vary depending on where you are. And I am always a big fan of elements, you know, changing in different lights because it just keeps things interesting. Oh, and this is just one thing that I absolutely love. All the hands are pretty much perfectly proportioned. And uh, yeah, like I said before, I love the handset and it just makes it better that they all hit their respective markers just perfectly. And it just makes me so happy to see that. And then there are the indices, which has an interesting color because the official Seiko photos show the indices are white, you know, like you'd expect. But in real life, they have a light blue tinge that can vary from just being a tinge of light blue to a full on light blue color. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this because, you know, I wasn't expecting to see a light blue color, but to be so prevalent, but now it's just part of the design and it adds to the visual interest of the dial. And it's already such a cool combination of white, white dial, black bezel, throw in an extra color. That's really cool. Oh, and since they were light blue, I was thinking, okay, clearly that means that the loom is light blue, but it's actually green, which I wasn't, once again, I wasn't expecting. And, you know, while we're talking about loom, it's good and strong as you'd expect from Seiko. And most, most importantly, it's clear, crisp, and not splotchy. And actually, because the dial is white, it kind of illuminates the entire dial in a light way. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about the SPB143. Oh my God. The SPB313 and as always, hit the like button and subscribe button. It helps a bunch. And plus I'm gonna be doing a giveaway very soon for 10,000 subscribers. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And until the next video, good day.